<laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. Oh my goodness me, ladies and gentlemen, you join me on the news team today on this auspicious occasion. Dr. Gabriel is here with us today. It was all his idea. I don't think you can believe it yourself today, can you? We've lost image, I'm afraid, at the moment because the rocket is blasting off. But any second now, I believe we are about to see the first ever bear in space. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes, look, here we are. Oh, my goodness. What made you think of uh, Mars, Dr. Gabriel? What, what was going through your head at the time? Oh, sorry, sorry, we're going to have to stop you there. Um, I think we can cut to the actual... Oh, look, we can see Earth going by in the shadow there. Oh, sorry, I see what you mean. Fantastic. My goodness me. There she is, the first ever bear in space. Oh, my goodness me. That must be the moon shadow now that's going by. Oh, my goodness. Who would have thought it? You must be ever so proud, Dr. Gabriel. My goodness me. I bet it's been a really, really long, long time to have been thinking about all of this, the plans that you must have put in place. I mean, what were you saying? Uh, that it was the Mars, Mars or the Milky Way. Those are the ones that Chocolate Chocolate Button wanted to go to. Well, that's fair enough. I can see the logic there. My goodness me. Well, thank you so much for having this idea in the first place. This is absolutely incredible viewing. Can you believe Chocolate Chocolate Button is out there in space as we speak? Now, as I understand it, we're about to lose sight of her again as she lands the aircraft the spacecraft, I'm sorry to say, uh, the spacecraft on Mars. There she goes. But any second now, we should be able to hear the decompression chamber opening as history is made, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. History is made as Chocolate Chocolate Button becomes the first bear ever to set foot on Mars. In fact, she is the first living creature to have set foot on Mars. And there she is. Oh, with that characteristic moonwalk. There she is, jumping up and down. My goodness me, I cannot believe that history is being made. Pardon, what was that? We might be able to cut through into actually speaking to her right now. Oh my goodness, yes please, let's try. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Chocolate Chocolate Button, you are live on the news. Give us a wave. Oh, I can see you waving. Fantastic. My goodness me. Do you have anything to say, Chocolate Chocolate Button? Yes, this is, this is one small step for a bear and one giant bound for bear kind. That is absolutely, that is absolutely true, Chocolate Button. I'm afraid you're cutting out. And I'm afraid it's time for phonics now, so you're going to have to get ready for phonics and come back as quickly as you can. Do you think you're going to be ready by the time I get to zero? Who knows? Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and zero. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chocolate Chocolate Button Teacher's Phonics. We are going to start off with some windscreen wipers. So raise your arms so that they are out to your sides. Hold them there for two seconds. One, two, 
and then put them up above your head as far as they can go, but keep your shoulders relaxed down. Okay, so you could lift up your shoulders and then relax them just to kind of work out if they're going up or if they're going down. And you want your shoulders sort of down, but then your arms right up above your ears. Okay, and then you're going to move them um, as if they're windscreen wipers. So you're going to move that, um, your left arm that way and your right arm that way. That's it. And then the other way around. That's it. So it's almost like you're waving with your arms in the air. And then we could make the noises of the windscreen wipers as if they're a bit squeaky, like that's it. Maybe it's just Mr. Lee's car where they're a bit squeaky, but his his car definitely they make that noise. And arms out to the sides and relax. Whew. Okay. The next one we're gonna do is the scissors one so you put your arms out in front of you actually lucy can you please show them sure you're going to put your arms out in front of you uh with your palms up facing upwards there's your palm facing upwards and then you're going to put your right arm over your left arm and then you're going to do the scissors ready one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then you're going to put your left arm over your right arm. And then you're going to go scissors again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're going to do some hand pushes now. So push your palms together. Oh, Lucy, please, can you show them? Sure. Push your palms together. Like that. Put your palms together like that. And then you're going to push as hard as you can. Okay, ready? Push. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. And then push. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Relax. Okay, the final one is we're going to make those circles with our fingers. So, first of all, you get your um, Peter pointer and your thumb, and you make a circle with them. Okay, can you see there's like a circle in there? That's it, make a circle there. And then your middle finger and your thumb, make a circle. That makes quite a good rabbit shadow puppet if you ever have a moment. And then your ring finger and your thumb. And then your little finger and your thumb. And back the other way. See how quickly you can do it. Okay, well done. Are we warmed up? Yes, perfect. For our handwriting pattern today, we're going to start off with the whirly gig. Okay, right, off you go. The whirly gig. Woohoo! Round and round she goes. Round and round the garden like a teddy bear. One step, two step, tickly under there. That's what my granddad used to do. And then tickle me under the armpits. Woo! Used to make me squeal. And next off, we're going to do the letter E. So it goes up and round and round and round. Woo! And woo! Try and keep your pen on the page. Fantastic. And now we're going to do the C again, forwards and backwards, and forwards and backwards, and forwards and backwards, 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 forwards and backwards. Okay, and then we're going to do the number 10. So we all know how to write number 10. We go down and a circle. Do you remember how we decided we weren't going to do a little flick on the one? It's just a straight down. So one circle, one round, one round, one round. If I were you, I would also go anti-clockwise with your circle because that's most common in handwriting is that you get used to going that way rather than that way. So it's just worth practicing. You might as well just get used to it by doing it like that. There we go. That's our handwriting patterns done. 
Oh my goodness, what is our letter for today that we're practising? Let's find out. Today we are practising the letter E. Okay, the letter E. Um, hence why we were doing those loops earlier to give us a little bit of extra practice. So, first of all, let's see it please, Lucy. Okay, so we're going to start on the line as always. And then we're going to go loop up, round, and there we go. There's a letter E. Go up, round, and there we go. Up, round, and there's an E. Left hand, please. Okay, I'll do my best. Let me just this up a bit. Up, round, and there we go. Up, round, and there we go. Up, round, and there we go. Okay, let's try a whole line of E's. So your letter E is going to go halfway between the lines, okay? So it just goes up halfway. It doesn't have an ascender or a descender, it just goes up halfway. Okay, so we're going to go up, round, and flick. Up, round, and flick. Okay, and then with my right hand, I can make, with my right hand, I, I manage to get it a bit more vertical, which makes it look a bit more like an E, rather than just like a bow, when I do it with my left hand. So those ones are a bit better. Sorry, it's just because I'm not very good at it with my, with my left hand. So if you're joining them together, just keep it nice and flowing. And then we just do a nice... lovely line of them. Okay? Perfect. Right, let's have a practice. I wish I could go in a hot air balloon. I've always wanted to go in one, but never managed to get round to it. So that's what I'm going to do. When, when we're allowed to go back outside and do lots of things again, I'm going to definitely remember that I really would like to go on a hot air balloon. Right, okay, let's see um, what we've got to do now. Oh, we've got to do our brown words next. Okay, get ready to see if you can say the word before I do. Okay, see you in a sec, bye. Me, you, we, there, do, they, so, Have it's out. She little about people. Then he, 
that. Children from were help house just said like come when be one some went what oh my goodness you are getting so good at that one i cannot believe how fast you've got at learning all of these different words it's so impressive well done don't worry if you miss some it's totally fine we'll keep practicing them until everyone can do all of them that's brilliant okay let's move on to our sounds can you say the sound before i do let's go y e or i F or E Ow Oi E Uh I A I O O O O O Z Q O O Ah Ear Sh Mmm G O F O Ow or oo you or oo j your or 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 air un a w k g R T O V O
you or ooh. Ooh or uh. Uh. A. Oi. Ing. Uh. Just take a moment to look at that huge pile of sounds that you now know. It's amazing. My goodness me, to think that when you started in reception, you maybe only knew a few or maybe even none, and now you know all of those, and you know that some of them have got more than one sound hidden in them. It's amazing. I am so impressed. Well done. I think you should give yourself a big pat on the back for that. Nice work. Or a big round of applause. Or a pause, if you're a bear like me. Look, round of a pause. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> no? Oh, fair enough. Okay, right, let's see what our sounds are for today. Our sound for today is the sound OR. Now we have two graphemes for this at the moment. We've got AW grapheme, OR, and we've got OR grapheme, OR. Okay, so let's sort some words and see which side they should go under. They both make the sound OR. Right, let's go. Or saw. Oh, look, like a tool in a toolbox. Use it to cut wood with a saw. Let me just play with the lighting a second. So that we can read them. There we go. Oh, or law. Oh, don't break the law unless you want to get in trouble with the police. K or n. Corn. Corn. Ah, the hen ate some corn. Corn. Let's see what the next one is. St. St. Or. N. St. Orm. Storm. Oh, there was a big storm with thundering and lightning. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Storm. So can you see that that one's going in the OR section because... It's got the OR grapheme, and these ones are AW grapheme, so they're going in the other uh, grapheme pile. Oh, look what it is. Can you see? Look. It's a paw, just like I've got. Paw. There we go. Paw. Yeah. Nice work. Oh, and again, another thing that bears have, although I actually don't have any. K oh. Cl or claw. Uh, okay, there you go. Claws are just sharp toenails, aren't they, really? Let's see what the next one is. Horn. Horn. A horn. So that's a type of instrument as well. That was, I was just singing. Uh, a French horn, I think, plays that one. Very famous piece of music, I think, for a French horn, although I could be wrong. And, oh, maybe you would like to hear some a French horn. Let me see if I can find some music for a French horn. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but in the background you should be able to hear some French horn playing. Uh, some Beethoven, who's a very famous composer, who composed that piece of music that everyone knows. Da, 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 that one. <laughs> okay, let's try the next one. O or N. Lawn. Lawn. Ah, uh, that's an A W. Maybe we need to put those. There's lots of those, aren't there? Okay. R all crawl crawl okay so not that one that one goes in the middle so I was about to say that I think probably the AW is always at the end of a word and the OR is always in the middle 
But I don't think that can be right because look, here we've got lawn and it, AW is in the middle and cruel where A double is in the middle. Hmm, let's see. Sp, sport, sport, sport. Uh, that's OR, so that's going to go over there. Hmm. R or R, that's going to go over there. Short, short, over there. Can you spot a pattern yet? I can't see a rule yet. Uh oh. D or or draw. Oh, so and do you remember we talked about this the other day? Draw. We don't say I drawed or I drewed. We say I, I draw. Fork, fork. Oh, that's going to go over there. There's another one in the middle. Oh, but look, if you take off the K of that one, for, please can I have a present for my birthday? So that ends in OR, so it doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't work either. Let's try the next one. T, or, ch, torch. Hmm, that one goes over there. I think we're going to have to rely on our visual memories for this one. Fort, fort, oh, cool. That's a fun place to play in a fort, like a castle. Hmm. And then we've got fork, fork. Hang on, but that was fork. Oh, it's that C making a s sound again, isn't it? So it's force, force, like uh, amount of strength, isn't it? Force, something that. Uh, make something else happen, a force. Oh, there we go. So these ones, hmm, well, if it ends in or, I suppose we could say it often ends in aw, but it doesn't always because aw is sometimes in the middle of the word. And on these ones, if it's in the middle of the word, it's usually or, apart from the word for. Oh dear. I think just have a look and see if you can remember. I think we should underline the or sound in these ones, don't you? Okay, yes, let's do that. While we're having a look and a listen. Can you remember what type of instrument is playing? Actually, at the moment it's piano. It's double confusing. Can you remember what this sound, what's making this sound? Remember? Yes, that's right, a French horn. Okay, so let's find the or sound in all of these. There's one. Or, or. So that one's in the middle. That one's at the end. At the end. In the middle. At the end. At the end. And this one's in the middle. 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 In the middle, in the middle. So perhaps for is actually the, the odd one out. And the word or itself, of course. I would like to do this, or I would like to do that. Hmm, sorry not to be more help. Okay, just try and remember, I think. You are never going to guess what has happened. I was busy writing something for us to read, do a bit of shared reading later, and all of these words around the edge fell off the page and are now just sitting around the edge and are in the wrong order. Please can you help me put them back on the page so that my sentences make sense? You will? Oh, thank you so much. Okay, let's read the words around the edge first so that we know what we're playing with. Okay, we've got people, soon, born, forts, lawn, sports, crawl, Fork, uh, short, short, toys, few, and spoon, spoon. Okay, so let's read the story together and see if we can make it make sense. Okay, so we've got when, so we know that's when, when I was a 
uh, chocolate chocolate button. So wait, sorry, sorry. When I was, hmm, when I was spoon, no, that definitely won't make sense. When I was toys, no. When I was short, that would make sense. When I was born, oh, born. It's going to be born, isn't it? Okay, so when I was born, I can put that one back in. Whoop. Oh, good. That already makes a lot more sense. When I was born, I would... Well, if I was born, I'd be a baby. So I would spoon. No. I would sports. I would cr crawl. Ah, I would crawl because I was a baby. That makes sense. Okay. When I was born, I would crawl. I would crawl on the spoon. <laughs> I don't think it could be spoon. I would crawl on the toys, but that might be a bit painful. I don't think it could be toys. Crawl on the people? No. On the lawn? Isn't Does lawn mean a bit of grass? It does. Exactly right. It means a bit of grass in your garden. So I think that's definitely right. It's lawn. So when I was born, I would crawl on the lawn. Hey, Lucy, that rhymes. It does, doesn't it? When I was born, I would crawl on the lawn. Now that I am not so... Hmm. I am not so sports. I am not so fork. I am not so short. Yes, I am not so short. Now I am not so short. I do... Soon sports. Sports. I do sports. Now that I am not so short, I do sports. That makes sense. I do sports and play forts. Oh, look, it's just right next to it. <laughs> That's perfect. So, and now I play sport forts. Forts. So, let's read it from the beginning and check it makes sense. Oh, look, there's even a full stop there. Okay, so now it says, when I was born, I would crawl on the lawn. Now that I am not so short, I do sports and play forts. Lucky them, I love playing forts. Me too. Right, let's put the other spare words all in the same place now so that we can see that they're all together. We don't have to look in so many different places now. When I was born, I would crawl on the lawn. Now that I am not so short, I do sports and play forts. I have a something and a something to eat with. I have a something and a something to eat with. Well, what do you use in this pile, in this list, that you eat with? Well, you don't use toys to eat with. Oh, fork. You use a fork to eat with. That's true. And there must be something else on there that you use to eat with. I have a fork and a... Spo spoon! Spoon! That's what it is. I have a fork and a spoon to eat with. There we go. With. I have, a sp I have a fork and a spoon to eat with and lots of something to enjoy. Well, it's got to be more than one thing because lots of. So it's going to end with an S. Do any of these words end with an S? Oh yeah, look, toys, perfect. So now it says, I have a fork and a spoon to eat with and lots of toys to enjoy. I just wish I had a something more, something to play with something. Hmm. Uh, I think it's, I think it's soon. I think it's soon. Okay, let's see. I just wish I had a soon more. Oh no, it's not soon. No, I think you're right. It's not soon. I wish I had a people more. No. Oh, a few more. That's what it says. I wish I had a few 
a few more something to play with soon. Oh, soon. Ah, yes, look, there we go. <laughs> well done, Chocolate Chocolate Button. You did that without even realising, I think. So what's the last one then? Well, it has to be people. Well, let's just check, Chocolate Button, shall we? Okay. I just wish I had a few more people to play with soon. <gasps> yes, that's it. I wish I had a few more people to play with soon. That must be it. Perfect. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for helping me sort out all those words. That's much better now. How did you get on at home? Did you manage to sort out some of the, find some of the words in the list? Well done. Oh, it's not easy, but actually it's a really, really good thing to start doing is to start checking our work. You could even play this game at home by write, choosing something to write and then missing out some words and then getting your your mummy or your brother or sister or someone to try and guess what the missing words are and see if they see if they get them right. That would be a really fun game. Perfect. Okay, let's get on with our quick write now. Okay, let's go, let's go. Get your whiteboard and your whiteboard pen ready. Okay, for our quick write today, we are concentrating on words with the sound or in them. And as we know, the grapheme for the sound or is either going to be A-W or O-R. Or O-R. <laughs> okay, so let's get started then. So number one is the word... Uh, chocolate, chocolate button. That was a clue, silly. It's the word yawn. Oh, I see. I thought you were just having a big old yawn then. Okay, you ready? So we're going to do y or n. Yawn. Yawn. Have a look. Write it out. Choose a grapheme. Have a look at it and think, hmm, does that look right? And then you can decide and then try it with the other one if you don't think that's right. Okay? Choose whichever one you think looks the most right. The next one is the word raw. Raw. I said, this meat isn't cooked, it's still raw. Oh my goodness. This carrot isn't cooked, it's still crunchy. That must mean it's raw. Raw. R or raw. Have a look and see which or sound it is and then write it down. Have a think. As I've said many times before, it really doesn't matter if you get it wrong because we are just trying our best here. Okay, that's all that matters. The more we practice, the easier we'll find it. Okay, raw. The next one is ha ha ha, claw, claw. Number three is the word claw. Can you show me your claws? <laughs> claws. Okay, so we've got k, o, o. Claw. Claw. Number four is a word probably we haven't come across that much. It's the word shawl. Shawl. And a shawl is, a, is like a, a blanket, really. A very kind of pretty, ornate type of blanket that people, often women, probably mainly women in a way, um, would wear over their dress to keep their themselves warm when it got a bit chilly in the evenings if you were wearing a dress. You might have a shawl. Um, sometimes, I suppose, your parents might have something called a pashmina. They were very popular for a while. That's a bit like a shawl. It's just something they pop over their shoulders, like a big scarf that they put over their shoulders to keep warm instead of putting on a jumper. Okay, that's called a shawl. So number four is the word shawl. Shawl. Number five is the word draw. Draw. D -r -or. Draw. D -r -or. Draw. And it's not the type of uh, thing that you put in your cupboard. You know, you might have a chest of drawers where you put your um, t-shirts and things. 
It's not that. It's a draw to draw, the verb to draw, as in to draw a nice picture. Okay, that type of draw. The next word, number one, two, three, four, five, six, number six is the word jaw. Jaw, which is this bone here in your mouth that kind of goes up and down to make you get to make you be able to eat and be able to talk. That's called your jaw, your jaw bone. Okay? Jaw. When I was at school, we used to have a talk by someone each week, and that was called jaw because people's mouths go up and down, their jaws go up and down when they're talking. Jaw. The next one, number seven, is the word crawl. Crawl. Just like we did just now. When I was born, I would crawl on the lawn. Crawl. It means to walk on your hands and feet, on uh, hands and knees, I beg your pardon. Oh, the next one uh, is the word that we've been practicing all week. It's the word have. Have. How do you spell the word have? So number eight is the word have. Number nine is the word like. Again, we've been practicing this all week. Don't worry if you don't get it, but it'd be really good if you can try and remember how to spell the word like. Like. Just like in our book, we read I like you the other day. Like. The next one is the word torch. Oh, it's getting very dark in here. We better get our, turn our torch on so we can see. Torch. Torch. T or ch. Torch. Three sounds, but five letters. Torch. The next one is the word sport. Sport. S -p or t sport. Four sounds. S -p or t sport. Four sounds, five letters. Sport. I love to do sport with my friends. Sport. Shirley is really, really good at sport. She's particularly good at netball. Sport. The next one is cork. Cork. Or k cork. I don't know if you particularly know what cork is, but it's it's a type of material, and um, oh, I tell you what, we do have it. We have it at school. Um, the mats that we use to play tip tip and tap, tip tap, or whatever that that game is called, where we have shapes with little holes in wooden shapes with holes and little hammers, and we have to tap the nails in to, keep, to put them in place and we can make lots of different pictures that the boards that we do that into they're made out of cork that's it cork and the next one is yes you've guessed it it's horn Horn. Oh, I would love it if someone decided to play the French horn. Such a beautiful instrument. I bet hardly anyone plays the French horn as well. I bet there aren't many, many French horn players around. Just like the bassoon, actually. Probably not many bassoon players either. 
you could pick up either of those and, and all music teachers in the, in the country would be delighted. Horn. The French horn's quite fun as well because it's all curly and then it has a big bell at the end. It's very cool. Horn. The next one is the word short. Short. I am very short for my age. Short. As you know, because when we measured ourselves on our wall, do you remember? It's a long time ago now. We measured ourselves and we put a little chalk line to say where we all were. And everyone in the whole class was taller than me, apart from Space Ted. Yes. But yes, everyone was taller than me. Lil Wen, Zen, Aiden, Everyone was taller than me. Marcel was taller than me. Oh dear. So yes, I am short for my age. Short. And the last one for today is the word fort. Aha. And a fort is like a castle. Fort. How do you write the word fort? Oh, I would really like to make a fort and then defend it and have someone come and play and come and attack my fort and then I can defend it. Pew pew, that'd be so fun with my bows and arrows. Hmm, that sounds like a game for later, Lucy. I think you could be right, Chocolate Chocolate Button. That does sound like a game for later. Woohoo, yes. Fort. Okay, I think that is all of our spellings for today. So we shall have a little look and see how we've got on now. Okay, right, fantastic. See you in a bit. Woo! Because it is f -f -f Friday, f -f -f Friday, f -f -f Friday, then it means that we are doing our shared reading next. So let's see what book we have for our shared reading. <gasps> I'm excited! Well, today for our shared reading, I found this book because I think it's got lots of the sounds that we have been practicing this week. And it's a book that has bears in it. Hooray! These ones are a particular type of bear. They're called teddy bears. I don't know if you've ever heard of this type of bear. I'm pretty sure you will have though. And so as you can see, straight away we can see one of our sounds for this week, which is oo. And it's called oot hoot. And it's by Jane Hissy. Have a look, and there's an owl and a teddy bear. Woohoo! And then we've got it's published by Red Fox. So, a fox, an animal this time rather than a bird. Interesting. Hoot by Jane Hissy, published by Red Fox. Let me just. It was the middle of the night and all the toys should have been fast asleep. But Little Bear was wide awake. There's Little Bear and there are all the other, bear, all the other toys who are asleep. There's that oi sound that we talked about before. Oi, toys. He leaned over and tugged at Rabbit's ear. Wake up! He whispered, I heard a funny noise. There's that oi sound again. What sort of noise? muttered Rabbit sleepily. Well, first, there's that er uh sound, first there was a thump and then a woo, said Little Bear. 
Do you think it was a ghost? Probably just the wind outside, said Rabbit, sitting up and staring into the darkness. Then they both heard the noise. Woo! It doesn't really sound like the wind, does it? said Little Bear nervously. Mm. Without warning, a white shape drifted past the bed. Rabbit and Little Bear dived under the bedclothes. What was that? whispered Little Bear. I'm not sure, said Rabbit. Has it gone? I daren't look, said Little Bear, with his head still covered by the sheet. I'll wake Bramwell. He wriggled along under the bedclothes and shook Bramwell's paw. Paw, look, there's the oar sound. Paw, paw. Wake up, he whispered. There's something in the room. It's whizzing about and saying, woo. Wind, I expect, said Bramwell. Why are you both hiding? We saw it, said Rabbit, but we didn't want it to see us. Mm. By now, all the toys were wide awake. It's the middle of the night, grumbled Duck. What are you all doing? We saw something white whiz past the bed, said Little Bear. And, and I suppose it was a, it said, woo, said Duck. How did you know, asked Little Bear. Old Bear was just about to tell everyone to go back to sleep when there was an even louder, woo hoo. This time it came from the other side of the room. He reached over and turned on the bedside light. I'm sure it's just the wind under the door, he said, but I'd better go and see. He slid down from the bed, rummaged in the drawer, there's that oar sound again, drawer for the torch, and set off to investigate. Look, that's the drawer, type of drawer that you pull things out of, that you keep your t-shirts in. And then the other type of draw without the ER is the verb to draw, so the action of, of drawing. Oh look, there he is, those are some drawers, just like we were talking about. Oh look, and he's got a torch, look there's that or sound in the torch, torch, torch. Oh look, and we were talking about this earlier, weren't we, in the handwriting warm-up? Making shadow puppets with our hands. <laughs> While they were waiting for Old Bear to return, Bramwell showed the other toys how to make funny shadow pictures on the wall. Little Bear thought he'd made a really good rabbit shape until he realised it was rabbit. <laughs> so he tried an elephant shadow instead and Rabbit made a crocodile that could open and shut its mouth. The crocodile was just about to bite the elephant's trunk when the old bear returned. I didn't see anything, he said, but someone has been here. All the things we left out have been tidied and put away. Well, wind doesn't tidy things up, says Little Bear, but I suppose a ghost might. Let's all go together and have a look. And look, there they all are having a good look. The toys jumped down from the bed and tiptoed across the room. So there's that oo, the double O grapheme making an oof sound, room, instead of room peering into corners and behind the furniture. Then they heard the whoo right above their heads. That's it, cried Little Bear. That's my noise. It's on top of the cupboard. Noises aren't usually on their own, muttered Duck. No, they come from something.
as he as he spoke, something white swooped down and landed beside the toys. Hello, everyone! It said. Little Bear dived to safety behind Old Bear, and they all stared in amazement at a little white owl in a blue apron. Wow! Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd love to have a toy owl. Well, what are you all doing up in the night? asked the owl. You're usually fast asleep. We heard a sort of ghostly woo noise, said Little Bear, peeping out from behind Old Bear. That was me, said the owl. I always do it. That's why they call me Hoot. Hoot. Ah. Yep. Hoot. Hoot. <laughs> I heard a thump too, said Little Bear. Ah, that was my nest falling down, explained Hoot. Hoot. Oh dear, said Old Bear. Where was your nest? Up there, replied Hoot, waving a wing at the tall cupboard. Only now it's down there, she said, pointing at the floor. But why have we never seen you before? asked Little Bear. Owls sleep during the day, said Hoot, and they come out at night. You all do the opposite way round. I was always careful not to wake you. Until my nest fell down, she added. Oh, there she is talking. Look at that lovely basket with all those toys in. Gosh, it looks like a really fun place to have a bedroom. The toys all followed Hoot over to the fallen nest. It's made out of socks, said Bramwell in surprise picking up one that had fallen out. Are they in pairs? Oh no, said Hoot. I only use odd ones. I find them lying around. Socks are perfect for a nest, nice and soft and warm. I always wondered where they went, said Little Bear. We've got a whole drawer full of socks that don't match. How will you get your nest back up, Hoot? Hoot pulled at the nest and a sock came away in her beak. I don't think I can, she said sadly. It will fall apart if I move it. Does your nest just have to be round and warm and soft? asked Little Bear. That's right, said Hoot. Well, said Little Bear, I know something that would make a really good nest. Look at all those odd socks. I wonder if you ever find that you've got odd socks. Do you know what Lucy's first dog when she was growing up? She used to have a dog uh, when she was growing up, and her dog was called Odd Socks because he had three brown paws and one white paw. So when she was lovely, she called him Odd Socks. Oh, I wonder what they've chosen for his nest. He rushed off with a torch and returned a few minutes later with an old woolly bobble hat. This won't fall apart, he said, climbing into the hat, and it's very cosy. You try it, Hoot. Hoot carefully lowered herself into the hat and snuggled down. Yes, it's lovely, she said. Thank you, hoo hoo, little bear, but I wonder if I'll be able to fly with it. Old bear found a piece of string and gave it to Hoot. If you fly to your cupboard with this, he explained. We'll tie the hat to the other end and you can pull it up. That's a good idea. There they go. So they've tied the string to that end with the bobble hat and then the owl hoot is flying off with the other end of the string. Wonderful, said Hoot stepping out of the nest. I'll see you later. Then, spreading her wings, she flew right up to the top of the cupboard with the end of the string in her beak. Little Bear tied the other end of the string to the bobble hat, and Hoot began to pull. 
Just as the hat was leaving the ground, Little Bear gave a big leap and clung to the bobble. Hoot tugged hard on the string and Little Bear and the bobble hat rose into the air. Put my rug on the bear. Uh-oh, what is Little Bear doing? Silly Little Bear. <laughs> Look, he's all the way at the top of the cupboard with Owl. With Hoot, sorry. <laughs> Hoot was too busy pulling to see what she was lifting up. So when Little Bear's ears suddenly appeared at the top of the cupboard, she nearly dropped the spring in surprise. What are you doing? she asked, helping Little Bear up. I wanted to see what it was like up here, said Little Bear. But how will you get down? asked Hoot. Hmm, I didn't really think about that, said Little Bear. Well, if you could help me put my new hoo-hoo nest in place, I'll give you hoo-hoo a ride on my back, said Hoot kindly. <gasps> wow, lucky little bear. I'd love to have a ride on Hoot. <gasps> Look. Little bear helped Hoot find just the right spot for her new nest. Then he climbed onto Hoot's back and she walked to the edge of the cupboard. Hold on tight, called Hoot, and with a big flap of her wings, she launched herself into the air. Look, I'm flying, called Little Bear, managing a quick wave to the others. They flew once around the room, swooped low over the bed, and then landed gently right beside Old Bear. There they are flying. I'm hungry now, said Hoot as her passenger climbed down. But it's the middle of the night, said Little Bear. Exactly, said Hoot. Lunch time for owls. She flew off again and returned with her lunch, a little pile of cheese and crackers wrapped in a handkerchief. Oh, lovely, cried Little Bear. A midnight feast. I don't think there will be enough for all of you, hoo hoo, said Hoot, doubtfully, as she carefully unwrapped the parcel of food. I wasn't really expecting guests. Don't worry, said Old Bear. We don't usually eat in the middle of the night, so nobody will be very hungry. Um, I think I might be, just a little bit, said Little Bear, staring at the crackers. Well, do hoo hoo, join me, said Hoot. It'll be nice to have some company for lunch. There they are, having lovely cheese and crackers for their lunch. Oh, cheese and crackers. Lunch of kings, that one. Old Bear realised that the other toys were beginning to look very sleepy. So when all the food had been eaten, he said it was time to say good night to Hoot and go back to bed. I'm sure we'll see you another night, he said. And we'll try not to be too noisy in the daytime, said Rabbit, now that we know you're asleep. Little Bear was so tired and full, he had to be carried off to bed. And very soon, all the toys were tucked up and fast asleep. There they are, fast asleep in their bed, all tucked up. And there's the owl flying away. In the morning, they found that Hoot had been had a very busy night. All the socks were hanging from the end of the bed and they'd been sorted into pairs. The socks from Hoot's nest and the matching ones from the sock drawer. Wow, Hoot has been busy, look, matching them all up together. Green and green, grey and grey, yellow and yellow, red and red, stripy and stripy, blue and blue, and orange and orange. The toys looked up at the cupboard. Thank you, Hoot, they whispered, and good night. They thought they heard a sleepy hoo, but it might just have been the wind outside. Mm -hmm. There's Hoot in her new bed. The end. Wow, what a lovely book. Thank you for helping me to read that with you today. 
I thought you did a brilliant job. I think some of you could just read that without any help at all nowadays. My goodness me. Thank you very much for all your hard work this week. I can't wait to see what we have to do next week. Um, because I think actually next week we're going to study a new different book. Uh, maybe a new different Roald Dahl book and see what reading we can get from there. Okay, brilliant. I can't wait to see you all next week. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you so much for all of your hard work, as I've said before. And thank you to Jane Hissey and Hoot and Red Fox Publishing for letting us read this book because we can't read it together in class because of the coronavirus. OK, see you very soon. Hoo, 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 soon. I'll be bummed. I'll be bummed. Bye. Bye. I'll be bummed. <laughs> Bye.